Alrighty, it's Daggy and Beaver back in the flesh. Beaver, how are you travelling, mate? Mate, you're looking fit. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. I'm travelling good. <laughs> yeah, all those hours at the gym are finally paying off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, good investment. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so enough picking on you, hey? Yeah, thanks. It'll start for, for start now. well. Uh, yeah. Welcome, everyone. For the first time is here, it's uh, Show Us Your Tips. We've been going for about four years, uh, and we will. Uh, we found a couple of winners along the way. But uh, we're getting more stuck. than our fair share. More than our fair share. So subscribe, stick around. Uh, we're also on Spotify, YouTube, and social media. Just a quick bit of housekeeping. Uh, we've had quite a bit of feedback about the midweek show, so we are going to try and put them up earlier again. Uh, there was a good response when they were, and people weren't happy when we put it up a bit later last Wednesday. So they will be up earlier, hopefully by Tuesday evening, going forward. Uh, but these are, are back to normal, and Dean's back. Welcome him back uh, behind the scenes after some surgery. So the mailing list, I believe, will be back in order as well next yeah, few beautiful. weeks. So subscribe at progroupracing.com.au. Are you excited for this? We've got uh, a massive card from Roundwick to get stuck into and the Caulfield Guineas card, which is also a ripper. Maybe not as tricky as Roundwick was, but uh, what are your thoughts here? Oh, what a day's racing. Uh, fantastic. Uh, put the feet up and uh, watch some good horses run around as mm -hmm. we get into the spring and hopefully um, find some winners and back some winners and... Uh, Keep building the bank. That's all we all we ever try to do, isn't it? So yeah. let's get stuck into Ramwick where the rail moves to the three metre position. They've served up beautiful weather in Sydney again. It will be the same tomorrow. We're gonna have a good track. Uh and Ramwick's played pretty well of late. So I think just all systems go here. We kick off with the St. Ledger over two thousand six hundred metres. Uh half a million dollar race. How are you starting today? Yeah, it's a pretty ordinary field for half a million dollar race. Mm. Um, looks like all the, um, the the quality stayers have headed to Melbourne early to uh, have their cups campaigns. I really, I really struggled with this race. Um, I just found it really hard to find a winner. I've gone for Benno. Um, just thought it's been consistent enough of late. Um, was as good a run as any um, in the last race, won by just fine. Um, and prior to that, uh, ran a pretty close. Um, Less than a couple of lengths behind, just fine. Uh, two starts back, so I think it can run well in a race that uh, could anything could pop out of the ground. I, when I looked at those three that crossed the line together through the lead up and had to just go somewhere else. Uh, not a, a low confidence race, seem similar to you, uh, but I've just landed on the import land legend, completely different form. Uh, looks like it is looking for a dry track, which it's going to get. And uh, they always come here and run well. So I'm going to put it on top. Uh, I'm going to say the main danger is Major Beal. Uh, I'm going to treat it, like I said, I've, I've tied the other three together. Given it pulled out of that lead up, uh, the, the rider blamed the the real dry track. I, sometimes they just say things for the sake of saying them, the riders. But uh, I think it, uh, can, it was before that race. I'm just petting that race. It was going much better before that in the proper group one stuff. And uh, the stable's flying. So... I'm going to play around those two if I play at all in this one. Uh, the second in the world pool is in play for the rest of this card. So we get some big, big pools in the tote, all the tote pools there, the duets, quinellas, trifectas, etc. Uh, we've got a 1,400 metre benchmark 78 to kick us off and it's a deep little race. Uh, who have you found here? It is a deep race. It's uh, a very good race, actually. A lot of horses come to this with some, some good form, but... Um, I'm going to stick with a horse that I've followed these three starts in, Gaza Blanca. I think it is a, a, a pretty decent horse and uh, there's nothing to suggest that the three runs to date um, can't set it up good to win this. He's giving a bit of weight to a few horses here, um, carrying the 61, but um, I think it can handle that. It's got the right gait and I think it's going to be hardest to beat. Uh, the blue colours was very good last start, yep. sequestered, and the horse that it beat there has come out and won since. So that's um, that's a good form line. And obviously uh, there's an import here that uh, also looks to have a little bit of ability. Only had the four starts, um, two wins, two placings, and, and that's Nails Murphy. So certainly a big watch over that. I'd probably be saving on that so, um, and backing Gaza Blanca. Yeah, I wish I'd seen a trial for that one, but yep. uh, scared of it. I think the market is in the right order. Gaza Blanca is on top. I think it's short in a field like this, given you know you, I think you, are, get you are betting for luck in a twenty horse field. Uh, a couple here that are snipers' chances uh, that are big prices. One is Ivan's Hero, who's going really well. Gets J Mac and is yes. going to be in that stalking running line position at twenties. Uh, and Touristic, I thought could run a race here at a big price. 
uh, when was it last night? It was about 40s last night. Again, running line. It was going quite well last prep, freshened up for this uh, and might just be a, the sniper here in a in a race where I can see them fanning and all coming down the middle. There's going to be a lot of pace with uh, Bodie Bobber and those one speed, so I think it'll drag this field out and a couple of those snipers' ones uh, get good shots here at a price. Uh, the third race is the Reginald Allen, a 1,400-metre for the three-year-olds, and I'm pretty keen on the chance here of uh, Jolly Star, actually. I thought that was a nice resumption over the shorter distance, chased a good horse, and a horse that has, has form around some of the top two-year-olds uh, first up in Fasil. Uh, J Mac on, it's going to just be in a stalking spot again, uh, which shoots him, and at the moment you can still back it each way. So it's on top for me from Arctic Glamour, who it was a def uh, demolition job last start, but that was a woeful field. Uh, going into that race, had to win, didn't. Uh, I think this is trickier, but I think it's a, an absolute live chance bouncing off that. I think they're about the two main ones. Uh, just would like to see Kundalini actually put something in a proper effort all race. And uh, Aditi obviously lead and is probably next best for your exotics, Beaver. Yeah, I, I thought, you know, this was a tricky race as well. Again, lots of horses with uh, winning form. I thought I just think Arctic Glen is a little bit short um, in this type of field. Uh Trialed well and then came out and won very impressively. But you're right, that was a pretty ordinary field. And, you know, first preparation, you know, couldn't win a maiden. So um, I've gone for Kundalini, even though um, it still is a maiden. Yeah. Um, but I just think it's it's raced against some good company. I liked the first up run. I know it didn't run Lost down, but I think Lost has a bit of ability. Um, and it was only the 1100. Gets out to the 1400 here, which I think is right up its alley. I like the $8. I think it will definitely finish top three. So... Um, that and I think you're right. I think the main danger, Jolly Star. I just, I just was against the favourite at the price. Yeah, agree, agree. Uh, the fourteen, the eighteen hundred metre Group Three gloaming again for the three year olds is up next, which is race number four. Uh, can you explain this Tannhauser preparation to me here? Um, because I really want to put it on top. Uh, I like the resumption. I just don't know why the six weeks between runs a trial since was good. Uh, I maybe they're going to try and go third up into the spring champion in a couple of weeks, but at ten bucks, I'm I'm going to put it on top here. I think it's a top horse. I think it's going to run well. Uh, Tom Kitten has to run well. Nash is flying. Finally gets an inside gate. It's been stuck wide the last three. Uh, finally gets an inside gate, and we know how well Nash is going from them. Uh, is the main danger, and I've backed already this um, Sakani down the bottom. I've had a, a little snipe at it. It was hundred to one. Uh, it's a million dollar colt with the Hawks team at a done done deal colt. I think they would have only expected to be getting warmed up once it got out to this sort of distance. It hit the line quite well. Third up, now comes here fourth up, and uh, as I said, 100 to 1. It's one for my exotics, but I've, I've had an each way little play at it already. Um, obviously, terrified of a Snowman, who will go forward, and we've seen Riff Rocket come out and destroy a field down south, but. But no, I just don't know if that form's necessarily in Sydney land as strong as what that looked last week. But what do you reckon? I oh, mate, I only think there's two chances because mm -hmm. I don't think the rest of this field is, you know, I don't think it's overly strong, to be honest. Um, you know, you're tipping a horse that was pretty ordinary uh, first up and so question mark there. Tom Kitten, D-Day here. Mm -hmm. um, if it's going to go to a derby and be competitive, it needs to win this. Um you know, short enough, but I think good enough. And I've got it on top. I think it will be winning this. But Snowman, uh, very scared of it because it did beat Riff Rocket, who came out and brained him. Yeah, last week. Uh, last week and yeah. is now the favourite in the derby after braining him there. Um, you know, might be suited by, might be more suited as the distance get out than Snowman. But uh, based on that form, you certainly wouldn't let this under your guard. And it was a good win last start. It was very good. Yeah. Uh, had, had the rail favour, but it was a good win, and Riff Rocket had a big job to catch it. Uh, Bowman, I fed, seem to have found Hugh Bowman a lot to the later part of this card. Is that is that a concern? I don't know if you've I done don't think so. I mean, he's all right. He's a good <laughs> jockey. Um, yeah, I, I don't see that as a concern. You know, he's he's a top jockey against a lot of what's riding here. Um, hard to say that he's not the second best jockey running around in Sydney on the day. Okay, who's number one? Nash. Thank you. <laughs> uh, the fifth is oh, J Mac. I didn't miss J Mac there, so um, yeah, he's maybe right. he, he might be number two. Uh, <laughs> the Kosciuszko is up. This race is a cracker. I uh, enjoyed getting stuck in this race. I don't know why, maybe because it's all my recent high weeks success. But um, we don't get one of them today. But we'll see if we can get 
the streak going. The what is it, two million dollar Kosciuszko for the smaller and bush stables. And I am going to go with uh, one of yours from a previous life in far too easy. Mm. I really like what it did last prep. I thought it's running a remind. It was fantastic. It's uh, trialed twice before that it chased Prince of Boom and gave it uh, a bit of a race. Uh, and the trial since have been fantastic. Uh, it's going to be in a swooping role. So you want to see him obviously making ground. But at the each way price, I'm going to go with it on top uh, from Derry Grove, who hasn't been out of second gear. Uh, in his last two highway runs, Nash has chosen it over a couple of others here and just loves Randwick. Uh, but obviously I wouldn't talk you out of the trolls. Oprah Ridge does have the proper group form in this race uh, and was under absolute double wraps there. Uh, so if you do like it, I'm not necessarily knocking them. Uh, and a few others I'll throw in that are all life chances. Nemeth, Broken Hill was good and Mogo Magic, obviously. But uh, I'm, I'm feeling like this Queensland is going to run us a, give us a good side here. Yeah, interesting race, hey. Um, mm. A lot of horses resuming, um, yeah. which is interesting going into a race uh, of this nature. Um, but you're right, I think it's pretty clear by the market. The top five in the market are all the horses to beat and anything outside of that, you know, I couldn't see bobbing up and, and getting that and, and winning. I'm not so sure about front page. I just haven't seen enough. Yeah, no, not, not um, a bit in recent times. I think your, your call on Derry Grove was is very good. It's flying at the moment, but... Um, this is this is a real race. This again, Opal Ridge. I think is probably a bit skinny. Um, I think concussion plates on as well. Yeah, and I, I mean, think I've got a feeling it's a wet tracker. I don't know. Um, well, no, nah, it's had six on a good and three wins, two placings. Yeah. Um, but you know, if you go and look at the form last preparation, and that's why it's come up at six to four in this field, and the draw is that it was in Group One and Two company up in, yeah. but that was up in Queensland, um, and so. How does that translate? But it has ran good races here in Sydney. But I, I, I liked Far Too Easy as well. Mm. Um, at the price, you're getting uh, each way odds there, seven, eight bucks and, you know, two bucks or better for the place. So I've got it on top um, as hardest hardest to beat. Uh, my two main dangers, Mogo Magic um, hasn't put a foot wrong. Drawn in gate four, I think that's pretty bomb-proof there. I think it will finish um, uh, within the top four. And Opal Ridge, obviously, um, a very, very, very good chance. Excellent. The Sydney Stakes or Everest Consolation, $2 million weight for age. Group three is next on the card. Who do you like here? Yeah, look, this is a, this is a good race as well um, and a very interesting race. Um, I, I got it down to two. Um, I, I kind of ruled King of Sparta out. I just didn't like the draw, yeah. um, but I thought it was a, a, you know, would have been a live chance outside of that. I've said it on Airman. Yes. Um, third up. That was arrogant last start. That when was. I watched it back. It was yeah, pretty yeah, arrogant. Yeah, it was well fancied first up and probably didn't, uh, it, it did enough. Um, second up, thought it was a pretty arrogant win, as you said, and uh, I think it'll be further improved by that. I think the nine gates, not a bad gate. So I had it on top and I couldn't leave out I Am Me. Um, so one well first up, um, willing to forgive the second up run. It was, it, it was had to do a lot of work and was only a little bit, little bit off him. Has come back and tried well since. I think it can run well. Um, so they were the two I sort of settled it down to. I had to put Bella Nipotina on top. It comes through the two lead up Everest lead ups running in the trifecta with horses that are all in the market in the Everest uh, and wasn't far away. Gets a good enough run here and is on top for me. Uh, from Zapateo, who has started shorter in both its lead-ups. He's now third up, gets Zach Purton, which is a massive, massive upgrade from sitting wide its last couple. Uh, and I will also throw in to an early quarter airman. You mentioned Valana, who loves Ramwick, uh, and I love him, but it may be more of a wet tracker. Uh, but I think that's about the race. A lot of these, um, King of Sparta's 1,100-metre, almost Caulfield, Melbourne horse. The rest of them, uh, we, we know their level. Yeah, I think it's an interesting race, right? Because a lot, luck in running is going to be key here. Because you've got Zapatea 13, I am me 12, Gate, King of Sparta 16, Bella Nipotina 15. Yeah. So I can't see all four of those getting an ideal run. Yes. So luck in running is going to be key there. Hence why I kind of went for Airman and thought um, it probably track and maybe keep one or two of those wide. Interesting, uh, and I just noticed, is interesting, it blinkers on its our time and Nash on. Uh, Nash is usually pinned to, has been pinned to Valana uh, over the over the course of its career, so that's an interesting one there. I thought, but maybe just a late booking or yet another chance here. Yeah. 
The Quaddy kicks off with the $20 million Tab Everest for the sprinters. And, uh, well, we've got a cracker again. And look forward to seeing your thoughts, people. Wow. Um, obviously a very even race. Um, you know, possibly poss- possibly lacking a bit of quality for... Well, we've, yeah, we've lost on paper the, you know... A few... Three of the top seeds, at least. Yes. So I think that's, that's obviously... Um, an interesting shout there. I've gone for think about it. Um, I just can't. I just can't not. Um, everything that's done, uh, taking all before it, it just finds a way to win. It's got a big heart. This horse. Um, you know, the back when it won the Group One in Eagle Farm, it had no right to win that beating Rough Fire, but just brained them, um, given the run, and uh, you know, it's come back out and won first up here. That's topped it off nicely for this. Gate five is probably perfect. Yeah. Um, can sit. Pretty much wherever it wants, right? Um, so I've got it on top and, and think it's going to be the hardest to beat. Um, looking for others, I wish I win, obviously, inside gate. Not quite sure about that. It's going to need going to need to find a path there. I thought Buenos Nachos could run really well, third up. Um, and I thought the $15 was quite nice. So I, I'd be saving on it. My, my, my best bet would be think about it. I'd save on Buenos. And I would also think in secret. I think I'm nervous about it. I think they're just going to have to sit. There, there could be pace on it. I think it could suit the wide gate. It could be one that just, if it hits the top form and explode, could explode down the outside. What scares me is uh, about In Secret, and I, I don't have anything here, but Zach Purton will ride two winners tomorrow. His whole card, he's on. they're all at prices. He's going to find a couple. And we've just got to find the right ones. Cause yep. he, he, he is in the conversation for best jockey on the card, actually. Uh, I've got I've gone with here and now. I've gone with Buenos Not Cheese on top. Uh, gets into the running line. Uh, is gonna has gone back and trialed since, where it's just a quite under wraps trial. Uh, clear air, and it's going to be in the finish tomorrow from Hawaii's five o. Uh, they both sort of have a sense of timing. Third up, coming here. J Mac has picked up the ride. It's going to be running line again. Uh, I think overpass going to lead. They've got cylinder. Think about it. Alcohol free in that first four. I can see. Uh, them all either getting a bit tangled or going a little bit too hard. Because uh, when I first set out to this race, I thought Overpass is just going to complete soft lead here, but I just can't see it happening. Someone's going to push forward uh, and put a bit of pressure on it. Uh, it could even be alcohol-free, you know, with stable orders for to set up the other one. But it, that being the that being the case, I'm, they're both double figures, and I think they both find that running line and get the sweepers crack here. Uh Interesting how Cylinder goes up into this grade. And I wish I win. We've both potted sort of for the same reasons. It almost feels like it's going to have to try and hug the rail and just hope for hope they fan and hope that it just gets a dream run because I can't see it. It doesn't feel like a, bu- a ducking and weaving Everest winner. You know? it, no. Um, let's just get that and, big. and ducking and weaving, you know, I wish I win probably just likes to get in the clear. Like That's what I'm thinking. Steam I'd rather it draw on gate 12 than gate yeah. 1 here. Yeah. Uh, that said, it's probably Hence in the, the market, same spot. If it, draw, if it draws six or out, it probably starts favourite. Exactly. Um, that said, everyone's going to f- think the same thing and it might get out to eight bucks and I'll give it serious thought at that price. Uh, the 1,300-metre million-dollar Sylvie Eagle is up next for the four-year-olds. That'll be race eight. And um, uh, much better clarity in this race. I'm keen on the chances of two. Well, in short, I think there's only two hopes. Uh, the first is Pericles, who's just bulletproof, uh, has had uh, a tidy prep to pretty soft kills, put away, sent away to Wyong for a trial, saved from the Doncaster. Now lobs up here. It's going to roll forward and be on the pace uh, and get Zach Pert in a million-dollar race from Benedetta, who we both sort of agree that is a group one horse in waiting. It's going to be in that swoopers position, uh, and it'll be the one that will be running down Pericles. I think that's about it. I didn't know what to do with the two Waterhouse imports. They're probably the, the scary ones. I don't quite know how to line up. What are you thinking? I settled, I settled for two. Um, I've gone for Benedetta. I uh, love the horse. Um, should have should have won last start. I, did, I just didn't like the ride. I don't know what they were doing there. Gate 10, I probably would have liked it a little bit closer just to be sure that it wasn't caught wide there. So hopefully might come in a couple of barriers there would be ideal. And I'm not ruling Yellow Brick out. Um I know it's ran second in the past three starts. Um, Getting run down at Toowoomba doesn't doesn't. Yeah, I know, but fill me with joy. I don't know that it was ready for that. Um, and it, 
and it had it did get to the early lead early there and had to do all the work and the other thing just did get the sit on it um, it'll be fitter for that they've brought it here i think this is the target and you've got to remember it ran less than a length behind a horse um that you just tipped to win the everest in yeah. hawaii 5 yep um carrying 57 um and did start favorite so um it's not here for shits and giggles so i won't be letting it under my guard they're the two in this race perfect the Smile Group is it Group One. Yep, uh, is it Group One? It is it still is. A Group One. The Everest isn't. Uh, King Charles the Third Stakes pops up next on the card. Mister Brightside opened what I would have thought is a farcical price, about a dollar ninety. It's on the drift now. Does it still win? Is it? Is it a bit of a Melbourne bully? Is there something here? Melbourne bully is one that I know. I was just Caster trying to prod people. Come on, yeah, prod me. Um, I assume you're tipping it. What's going to beat it? Can I tell you? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Light infantry man will beat it. Uh, this is proper European group one form here. Yeah. Gets Purton. Uh, has been good over there. That's That middle distance stuff's better than here. Uh, if you go back and watch the one race it had in Australia, which was, I think, the Silver Eagle last year, it nearly should have won. It was given absolutely none, pinned back to the fence, got out and hit the line well. Uh, I think it's up. If it, uh, It's still got to go off the plane, which is always a concern. But if it turns up here, I think it'll win. From uh, Buckaroo, who also brings proper European form, does get Bowman. Uh, Mr. Brightside, obvious chance. And Redina keeps drawing gate one on dry tracks and getting splits and winning. And I don't th- – it might do the same thing again here. I think this might be a better horse than we, we realise, Redina. Uh, so it's next pick. Great race, though. Um, but tell us why Mr. Brightside's going to win it. Well, I just think if you look at here, it's best weight for age ho- horse in this race. Mm-hmm. Um it's got the form on the board. Three runs in this preparation have all been outstanding, beating good fields, uh, beating them comfortably. Hasn't looked um, in any danger in any of those. Gate eight, I think, is ideal here. Um, it probably comes and sits one out, one back. Um, I think if it, I think if it gets to one out, one back position, this is almost all over. I can't see anything going past it. Um, Van, Go- you know, light infantry man. Maybe that form is is good and. Um, We'll soon see. It has only one, two out of 12. Uh, lots of placings. So um, can it find the line? Don't know. Um, but, you know, I prefer to see horses that are winning um, and finding the line that have got heart like Mr. Brightside than uh, ones that have coming here running seconds and thirds. I don't care in what company. The main danger is Fangirl. Um, we know how good it is. One well first up. Second up wasn't too bad. Um It'll be improved by that second up syndrome. Uh, if the if if the tempo is right here, it's got a very good finish and can beat these. But if I can get two dollars fifty, Mister Rightside, oh, I think that's not bad. Beauty, no, I like your confidence. Let's wrap up. I was going to ask you who you had as a danger, given you're so bullish, but you've covered that. The Ank Stakes finishes the card. Group three for the four year old Nut Mares over a mile. Uh, what's yeah, how are we going home in this tricky race? Yeah, I'm going for the number six, Soul Choice, here from the Waterhouse Bot Stable. I think they can win the last. Um, that was a good run first up. Um, went and had a pretty good kill in a maiden at Tar- Tarang um, and won with authority there without being extended. Um, I think this is, horse has a little bit of ability. I think uh, inside gate's going to set it up perfect here. It can get to where it needs to, can lead um, or sit in behind them and... This is a pretty deep race with not a lot of chances. I think uh, great way to finish the day. Yep. The only danger is Renaissance Woman, who was good first up. I thought just gassed out late there. Look, you'd see it's run peak. Yep. It could be much better second up. I think that's the race. I think it's so, right. So, yeah, you've covered that off pretty well. Our Everest Day Quaddy. Uh, let's see if we can get this. And uh, unfortunately, that's part of the world pool, but you might get a price anyway. Uh, the first leg, one I wish I win. Three, think about it. Six Buenos Noches, seven Hawaii Five O, ten Espiona, and twelve Cylinder. The second leg, one Pericles, seven Sacred Satano. Just a bit of Kiwis, found a bit of form over there. Might want a wet track. Nine New Endeavor, twelve Benedetta, and let's come home with. Uh, oh, we've got a third leg, don't we? Mister Brightside's in there, of course. Number two, five Light Infantry Man, seven Buckaroo. 11 Golden Mile and 12 and 13 Redina. And we'll come home with four Renaissance Woman, six Soul Choice, and one Amakura, who was impressive once it got out to the distance last prep. Uh, 
That's about it. Your best in value at Randwick. Yeah, my best is race four, number three, Tom Kitten. I only think there's two chances in it, so um, that makes it easier to pick one, and that's where my best will be. And my value comes up in the last race, 10, number six, sole choice. I think it's offering good value. Awesome. Uh, I'm going to another race that only has a couple of chances. I'm going to make race eight, number one, Pericles, my best. Uh, sneaky good day for the blue colours, which I didn't realise when I did the form, but I guess going through it then. Uh, they could have a good day. And race four, number one, Tannhauser, around the double figures, is my value. Uh, we've got through Roundwick. Now we've got to get to another massive card with three group ones on the day at Caulfield, uh, which should get into the good range, I'm told, with the rail moving into the true position. Yeah, I guess it'll be dead in the old, so a nice little bit of cut out of it with some rain yesterday. Uh, good card again. We're going to kick off with a 1700 metre benchmark 84, and I'll open a batting here. I'm pretty keen on the import up the top here, Convener. I liked what it did last prep, especially fresh. Uh, should have won its first two starts in Australia. Has had three jump outs for this. Is now first up, second preparation for Kieran uh, Ma. And I think it, the, at the double figure price, it's going to run well from Matron Bullwinkle, who was an impressive resumption. It did find the fast lane at Flemington, but that was. Very, very, a very, very pleasing return. I think it's the main danger here. What do you reckon? Yeah, I've gone for Matron Bullwinker. Yeah. I think um, you're right. Um, I think it might find a fast lane here at gate 14. Hopefully can just, they can lob along, pace on over the 1700 and it uh, can finish the hardest here um, and in, you know, nicely at the weights. So uh, it on top, um, didn't really like too much else. The second is a thoroughbred club Plate 1,200 metres for the three-year-old fillies. How have you lined up this Queenslander against this field? Yeah, I'm going to go for the Queenslander. Okay. I think um, when they do bring him here, they tend to run well and do well, particularly over these sprint journeys. We've seen it for the last few years. So I'm going to bank on that um, stacking up and continuing to, to run well. We've seen it with Antino. We've seen it with um, uh, Scalapini. We've seen it with... Uh, buffering, buffering. No, <laughs> there's the other one. Be. There's the other one. Uncommon James. Uncommon James. Yeah. Um, there's that. So uh, I think App and Girl can win here and gets the right draw here. I've got it on top. Main danger. Time of my life. One start, one win. I've got uh, she's all shenanigans on top. I don't think that race set up very well for it at Flemington with the the leader there had to trace a long way out and still wasn't far from uh, Inhibitions, who is a top horse. Uh, Going to go with it. Scared of App and Girl. Uh, so I just want to see, watch and learn there because I know the Queensland form tends to stack up, but I don't know about that three-year-old Queensland form with um, Chrysler and that sort of thing. They haven't been with us. So I want to see it, not not necessarily knocking it. Uh, and Miss Aria was back to the inside and had no luck last time at Sandown. That was next to Zardozzi, uh, who I did tip last week at 12s, came out and bolted in from the same position. So maybe there's a bit more strength to that race than we first thought. Uh, the third is a 2,400-metre Herbert Powell Stakes. Uh, this is an easy race for me. I think there's one hope. I think it's Carini. Uh, I liked it second. I liked its first up run. Uh, you were very bullish on its second up, and it won accordingly. Uh, I think it still has more upside. Mickey D is going to be – I think it gets, he'll go leaders back. I don't think he'll be any that far further back. He only needs even luck. I think it wins again. Uh, Braden Starr is the obvious danger. Uh, only danger. Only danger. I'm not really telling you the market's not, but uh, fairly bullish that this is, well, this is my bet of the day here. So yeah. what are you thinking? Yeah, I think you're right. I think there's uh, some plenty of upside here. I think it bull uh, done it, a lot of hard work in that last run yeah. and continued to find when put under pressure. Uh, it was a nice win that, and I think it's got bigger things in sight than, than this. Does this get it into the cup? Yes. Yeah. Uh, Caulfield, I want to say. Yeah. Caulfield Cup. Um, so I think that's that's the target here. Braden Star is first time out to this distance. Not sure it can get the 2400. It's a good horse, um, but I think it's going to have to be up to its best to beat the favourite here and to get the rest, they're, they're plotters. Yes, they are. The fourth is a group three for the mares, over 1,200 metres. Uh, I am looking for the each way price again, and I've found Mickey D again with Rose Quartz. I liked its resumption now to chase from a long way out. Just missed. Uh, gets a swoopers run here, and hopefully we are. I'm treating this track as fair, so obviously we'll wait and see that in play. But uh, at the each way price, I've got it on top. Uh, just brings different form to the lead up, which was a red card race, uh, which I like. And 
going to stick with it. I don't want to knock red card because I think Joe Marrero going on will suit it. He'll get it uh, travelling comfortably and can bounce back. Uh, next best, she's, she dances who will get the stalk on red card. But uh, I think Rose Quartz run well, runs well, Beaver. Yeah, I, I certainly think it'll run well as well. I, I narrowed it down to two. I had Rose Quartz. I did think it was a sweeper's race, Rose Quartz, and I had Cardigan Queen. Oh, nice. Um, I thought it was a good run it last was. start, and I think it can run well again here. I'm, I, I, I got question marks on red card. I, after its first up win, I thought it was pretty good. Um, it stuck on well, and I thought it'd be improved from that. And then it went to it went to um, Melbourne. It was backed off the map, and oh, I did, and it didn't run well. And it had every chance there. It led here. It's got gate twelve, so it's going to have to come across, mm -hmm. right? I don't know if it gets across to lead. No, well, there is other pace underneath. Well, it. she's dance. She dances is going to want to lead. Linda Meach won't won't give it up. So that's uh, number Holly seven. Holly Lolly has shown pace. Uh, yeah, yeah. So can red card sit with fifty seven against some of these horses on the outside of she's dances, which will ensure. Um, there's plenty of pace in the race. I don't even know if it can get past these dancers if it holds the inside and has to do all the mm -hmm. work on the outside. So for that reason, pace on. I'm going to go Rose Quartz, but super scared of Cardigan Queen. I'll certainly be saving on it. Beautiful. The Scalacci is up next, which is 1,100 metre group two wait for age race. And Asfura was all but a group one winner last time. She was fantastic at Mooney Valley. Just got nabbed by Imperatras, who might well be the best in sprinter in Australasia. Uh, it's on top here. It will lead this field because I think Uncommon James will be happy to tag. And, and that'll be that'll be the race. It'll just be whether Uncommon James second up has more upside. But I think as far as flying, gets into a lovely rhythm uh, and she is a top horse. That's about it for me. I'm going to go the other way. Gonna I'm going to go, go Uncommon James. Yeah. Uh, I think it might just get the sit here mm. and um, that might be enough. It just depends uh, whether it has to sit on the outside or it can get tucked in behind. Not quite sure how that's going to pan out, um, which is only question mark. But I do like Uncommon James, and it's been a good horse to me, so I'm going to have it on top um, and flip him the other way. Beauty. The sixth is the 1,400-metre weekend hustler, which is a listed race. And uh, who have you found? Jesus, this was a tough race, wasn't it? It was. Um, I think oh. I'm comfortable for where I ended up, though. So. Where'd you end up? The Wallapair. I've found uh, Rubanos on top, gets Joe Marrera, gets a lovely run. That was a, didn't have the clearest air first up, and I know it's been a while between drinks, but it uh, wasn't a bad resumption there behind Airman, but had to duck and weave and hit the line well. It's on top from uh, Wellwall, who resumes here, the international, which is now first up. Second prep for Waller, spent its time all in, the, uh, in all the expensive races last time out. I think this isn't a bad kickoff point for it. Uh, the rest of these are, are done and dusted, aren't they? Well, it's hard. It's hard to know, right? Yeah, I'm um, sure lots of people tell Moss, us if the best Ayrton Ayr Ayr turns up, it'll win. But yeah, it's, but been, that's been, two been, a while. it's been two years now. It's been two years. Yeah, I can't back it. River Moss, I'm, yeah, it's roundabout. I've gone for Regards Murray. Okay. Um, again, hasn't won for a while, but um, never runs a bad race. And I think it's drawn well enough here in this type of field. These are the types of fields that can win. So I've got it on top. $7 isn't bad. Um, but yeah, I think this anything can win. Couldn't talk anyone into anything or out of anything. No, fair fair enough as well. The Quaddy kicks off, which Beaver will be in charge of this later, with the first of the group ones, the Wait for Age 2000 metre Might and Power Stakes. And I think, actually, think there's only two hopes. Same one right. of the gay horses will win. Yep. It will be either just fine, is a star, uh, and gets past Alligator Blood, or Alligator Blood will get control under Tim Clark gets back on. Uh, and we'll, they'll both, they'll just pair off. They'll jiggy jog for about 1,728 metres and then they'll pair off for home and that'll be the race. I can't see anything running this down at all. Yep. Who's sharper? Just find sharper. Alligator blood at this stage is tougher. Yep. But that said, that did so, uh, I'm gonna, just fine did show some fight last time. I'm going to go so. just fine. Okay. And the reason is, is I think that it's if it comes down to a war, I think it just might have the edge. Yeah. Um, it's got the it's got the the this has won over this distance um, and and further. And Alligator Blood has not run or run a place when it's stepped over this distance. Um, I'm not sure even Caulfield's its best track. It's only one two out of seven there, but nothing at this distance. Um, that's a concern for me against a horse that we know can stay and 
um, goes further. So I've got it on top for that reason and that reason only. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, the eighth is the uh, Catnac Jewelers Vase for the girls. And I, I like the chances here of the Doncaster form in Barbie's Fox. I thought that was a great run in the Doncaster. Just uh, we don't you – know, average horses don't finish top four in the Doncaster generally. Uh, gets here, comes into a race, comes back to Mayor's Grade, I should say. Uh, Swoopers run where there's a little bit of pace up there with Nunthorpe, Wishlaw, Ludd, Papillion, Club all going forward. Uh, it is on top from our Red Morning who pulled up with EIPH last time. Uh, is fifteen bucks and will run better than that this year, this year, uh, in this race. Yeah, only limited chances here too. I've stuck with the favourite Wish, Wish Law Lass. Um, that was a good win first up, uh, second up. Um, wasn't bad first up, but uh, step back in company there and was just way too good for him. Just sat outside the leader and put pay to him there. I think again here it probably gets the one out one back here. Um, and that'll set up really nicely for this. This is a horse that's uh, it's progressive um, and can run really well. I think Foxy Frieda um, can improve. Uh, didn't do much first up, but I think uh, that was in a Group 2 company behind uh, a fairly decent horse in Amelia's Jewel. Um, I think there's improvement there. And Barbie's Fox is, is going well at the moment. I tipped it two starts back and that was a good run um, and followed it up with another good run that... Uh, I'm not sure if it might be coming to the end of its prep, but uh, anyway, we'll see. No, fair. Uh, the feature on the cards is the Group 1 Caulfield Guineas over the mile for the three-year-olds, and we get the clash of, well, I think two stars, uh, two star Colts here. And I'm going to let you p tell me who's, which one's going to win. Yes, the party for me. Um, like the setup, like the draw, like the horse, love the horse. Um, and I just think it's it's a winner. Um, it can sit anywhere. Um can sit on pace. We saw last start got back in the field. Yep. I, I was like, holy shit, what's happening here? And it was just, uh, you know, another another pretty straightforward win. It had to work and do everything um, from back in the field. Has the has the right trainer. Um, and, yeah, I think it'll be winning this and it'll only be where it goes on to after that. I think this horse is a star to party. I know it hasn't done it in the top, top grade yet, but uh, it had no right to win that race last time out. In fact, I'd just about, well, I had written it off um, as they turned into the straight. This is a serious horse. I don't think I've been this excited about a horse just about since early So You Think days. So big big shoes to fill with that quote coming out of my mouth. But uh, let's hope it can live up to it. I think it can choose to sit closer to the pace if it needs to, can take up a spot. And I have it on top as well from Militarise, who almost had no right to win that last rate, the Golden Rose either, and did so in mile suits. Uh, any cut of the ground suits uh, and is the obvious danger. I would only perhaps entertain maybe Griff as different form one, maybe for a quaddy, if that, just because sometimes you see in these sort of match races, someone has to burrow them both out. But uh, And I think there's upside to Verdad as well through the same form line. But two star Colts, can't wait to see the race. We're going to finish today with the mile two rack as well, another group one and at handicap level this time. And Amelia's Jewel currently 2.30. I've got on top. I, I, I'm not knocking it by any means. It broke the track record at Mooney Vale last time out, and I thought it was a, a parrier troll the way it was travelling. It was an amazing win when you see the times. Uh, it's on top. Even luck, it should win again here. Uh, the danger is what your mate Antina, who will roll forward, is a top horse and uh, can run a place. I think it almost sucks... Um, Amelia's drill across who it wants to because I don't think Blake's going to sit too far back there. It's not a great deal of pace underneath it, so I think it does find a spot up on the pace. Because I'm a little mad, I might throw something like Savannah Cloud into a quaddy, but I think there's only two horses really worth talking about here. Yeah, 100%. Again, it's hard to go away from Amelia's jewel. I mean, it's come here and absolutely looked a, a genuine star. Um, and, yeah, it's going to... You know, it's going to be a hell of a horse that beats it here. You're right. It just looked to be jog trotting when it won last start and let down. The start before was no different. Uh, probably gate tour's not bad. That means it can't yes, get boxed absolutely. in anywhere. Um, even if it is three wide, it's going to get a trail. Um, it's not going to be having to do any work. So uh, clearly on top for me. I, lo I love the fact it did take up a spot in that race too. So, But if there is no pace, yeah, um, he's got faith in pushing it forward and yep. can tag Antino or something similar across there if, if she has to. Uh, very good. Is Cox Plate next weekend? Two weeks. Next weekend. Next weekend. No. 
Yeah, because Caulfield Cup's two weekends, isn't it? Yeah, so it must be next weekend. No, no, Caulfield Cup's next weekend, then Cox Plate. Right, we're on top of it here. Uh, Very excited because I'd love to see one of those three-year-olds in the Cox Plate. I'd love to see Amelia's Jewel in the Cox Plate. And I guess we'll see what Mr. Brightside brings to Sydney, perhaps back for a Cox Plate. But anyway, that's all ahead of us. And Gold Trip, obviously. Uh, that's all ahead of us. Uh, what is your quaddy at Caulfield it's Cup? It's tricky. Pretty skinny unless you went something, jag something long and wide. Um, I'm going to go uh, in the first leg, race seven, num- which is the first leg, number one, Alligator Blood, number three, Nonconformist, and number six, Just Fine, just to be a little bit wide and weird. Um, in Can forgot is forgot you ready now? Nah. Okay. So, uh, well, that was a good win last start. It was a good run. A good run. Yeah. Yes. Didn't win, did it? Repeat. Dan was heavily backed. Yeah. So it yeah. Might not be far away. Maybe not in this company. Um, in the in the second leg, uh, number one, Foxy Frida. Uh, number four, Barbie's Fox. Uh, number ten, Wishlaw Lass. Um, in the third leg, which is the uh, Guineas, number one, Militarise, number four, Stapati. And to finish off, I'm going number three, Amelia's Jewel, number four, Pinstriped, uh, number six, Antino. And that's all I can really... Th- and number 14, here to shock. Okay. That would shock, but that's fine. We need a miracle. You're allowed to. Uh, it's going to be pretty skinny. Yes, it will be. Uh, that quarter year, you might owe them money if you get, if you get yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Just keep back on winners. The exactly the my best is race three, number eight, Carini. I think it's very hard to beat. And race one, number one, Convener is my value on the card, Beaver. Race nine, number four, Stapati is my best, and my value is race one, number nine, Matron Bullwinkle. Excellent. Maybe a nice Quinella to kick us off there. Uh, I've only got one at Morphville. Race two, number two, Huggle Time. I think can win again. What's happening up north? Uh, up north, I've got a few for us there. Uh, race two, number one, party for two is my first pick of the day there. Um, then as we get later into the day, I've got race six, number 17, Mission of Love. And then to finish off, my third one for the day is race seven, number two, Devastating. I think race 10, number six, Arnico bounces back as well. Yeah, um, but have, have that on your own. Slightly disappointing last time. Anyway, that's doing it. Uh, check out progroupracing.com.au for everything going on there as we head towards a Melbourne Cup carnival, during which we'll have show, four shows in that week. It's something to look forward to, as well as a runner-by-runner preview. Uh, we've got Cox Plate ahead, as we said, Caulfield Cup all coming up. So subscribe, stay tuned, and we'll talk to everyone uh, for the midweek show next week. Good See luck. you, guys. See you, Beaver.